Hello everyone, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I've recently added water to Weathermaker. I think this will be really nice for all of you to be able to have water uh, integrated with Weathermaker without needing other assets. So let's dive right in. I'm in the Viking Village scene. This is a scene freely downloadable from Unity. So what I'm going to do is show you the scene without water. And let's get this going here. It looks pretty bad. You've got this big grass plane. That's something I added. And it doesn't look all that great. I mean, the Viking Village itself looks great, but obviously looking out over here looks pretty bad. So one option with that is you could just drop in the Unity water scripts and those work okay, but they don't have the integration with Weathermaker and they don't have my single pass all light shader, which performs amazingly well on mobile and VR versus doing one pass per light. So let's drop in the water and see how this works. I'll go through all the properties. Make sure you understand how this works. So under the Weathermaker folder, prefab, <clears throat> you've got tons of prefabs here. One of which is we'll do the Weathermaker water clear prefab. So let's pop that in. And right away our scene looks so much better. Uh, you I can still see my crappy grass plane down there, but uh, that's that's my horrible artwork, not a problem with the water. So let's dive in and show you how the, this water works. Uh, we'll start with the script and then we'll move on to the material. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and go into play mode so I can look around easily. So let's get a good shot here. We've got the sun up there. We've got the script here, Weathermaker script here. Weathermaker water script has a couple of properties. We got that render mode. The one pass render mode renders all point, spot, and directional lights in one pass. You can go to the forward base <clears throat> plus add pass. So that's Unity doing their uh, custom shader passes, one pass per light. It looks a little bit different and you will get a slightly different look there but uh, I think if you want the best performance stick with one pass. We've got this enabled depth, depth blend that's on the edges here. It kind of gives it a soft fade. If you turn that off then the water you can see has sharp edges. So not so great. However, if you have something like ocean that doesn't need to, to blend you could consider turning that off if you're just having an ocean scene. Uh, so if you were to turn that off, you could also change this depth threshold and that would uh, raise the depth of the water as well. And you could do something like turning off the reflection and tweaking the parameters and you'd get some nice ocean water. But for this scene, I'm going to assume this is a lake and we'll want to definitely keep that depth blend on because it sure looks a lot better on the edges. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the reflection script, probably you don't need to mess with that. You can disable reflections by simply deactivating that script. You'll get quite a bit of a performance boost because when you render reflections, it has to draw the whole scene a second time. Now, it does this in a performant way, but still, it has to draw it a second time. So if you don't want those, turn them off. The reflections work great in VR, single and multi-pass. So that's one of the only water assets that I'm aware of that will do single and multi-pass reflections. Okay, so that's a, a simple overview of the script. Let's jump over to the material. So before I start changing the material, if you're going to want to change the material during play mode, make sure to drag it from the project view onto this element zero because when I run, I always clone the materials so that they don't get mucked up during your play mode. But if you want to change the original material, you can. Just drag it on. Now any changes you make during play mode will persist when you click stop. We've got a lot of properties here, so let's run through them all. We've got water reflections for the main and left eye, and then the right eye. Just ignore those. You don't need those. I don't think fallback texture is used either. We do have the shore and foam texture and the normal texture, so let's run through those. The normal texture changes how the water tiles, so as I change that texture, you see the water looks a little bit differently. Uh, 
some of the some of the normals are more spread out and more smooth. So depending on the look you want, you can tweak that. I'm going to undo that because I really like this default texture, which is Weather Maker Water Large Waves texture. All right, let's move on to base color. This controls the opacity of the water. So as you raise that, it fades less and less. You can see over here that we don't have a whole lot showing through. If you lower that base color to zero, then your water is mostly transparent. And if you combine that with removing reflections, you'll have some basically clear water. So you'll want to keep that to some value, somewhere in the middle probably, uh, that gives you a nice blend of opacity, but also not completely clear. You can tint the water as well. In case you want to have like a murky swamp, you could do a green water. Whatever you think of. Reflection color controls the tint of the reflection, so as you raise that, the reflection color becomes more powerful, and obviously raising that all the way removes the reflection, so you'll want to keep that alpha fairly low. You can again tint the reflections if you have some interesting effect you're looking for, but for the most part you could probably leave reflection color as the default. Specular color controls how these highlights hit off of the sun right into your eye. Again, you can tint the color of those. You can use the alpha to reduce their strength. Specular intensity is the same way. You can raise this up really high or you can set it really small if you have different effects that you want. Shininess controls the power and area of the specular highlight. As that goes up, the specular highlight becomes more powerful but smaller and all the way to zero means it covers the whole area. Probably leave that fairly high. 256 is a pretty good value. Powers of 2 are always good for doing powers because the shader will be much more optimized with a power of 2 power. Fresnel scale. So the Fresnel scale is basically a, a way to tell the water how kind of random it is and how how many angles you're going to be seeing on a low Fresnel scale. You don't get a lot of variety in the reflection. It's pretty smooth. As you raise that high, things get uh, more spread out and random. I've tried to pick a good value, a good default that kind of blends and looks fairly realistic. Let's take a look at this foam property. So the intensity is the X value. That's probably the only value you need to care about. You can see the foam here swirling around. That's probably a too high of an intensity. There we go. That looks pretty good. It's basically on the shore how much foam you want to have swimming around. Even at zero though it looks fine. So I'm going to be changing and optimizing the appearance with some of these later on, but for the most part most of these properties will stay. Let's take a look at these bump properties here. So the X and Y values determine how smooth the water is. So at a value of zero there's literally no distortions in the water which is more like a sheet of glass versus water so probably you want to keep that fairly close to the default. We've also got a distort parameter here if you turn that off the refraction underneath doesn't distort at all you can see that it's perfectly clear that's very unrealistic water has some reflect refraction so you want to change that to look how you like, depending on how turbulent you want the water. I tried again, tried to pick a pretty good value. We've got these Z and W parameters. They're, they're more for controlling how the reflection spreads out at a distance. So as you raise the Z value, that reflection fades off into the distance and the refraction becomes more dominant. This W value does something very similar. As you lower that, again, the reflection goes back, and you can raise it to bring that reflection closer. We've got this auto blend parameter that doesn't really do a whole lot other than as you raise it, it will fade that shore away further and further from the edge. Both of these X and Y will do that, but you have to go fairly high to see that effect. And the Z value also controls the shore. You can see as I lower that, the shore goes further and further to the edge. 
I don't even think the W is used at all. So dithering is an interesting one. When you go to the nighttime, water can have sometimes have a little bit of banding. So to, in order to see that, I'll turn off the post-processing layer and see if I can't get a good moonlight on the water. Even then, there's not a ton of banding. But if you are seeing banding on the water, what you can do is tweak that dithering property to some value. Uh, I've given it a default of like 0.1%, which is probably good enough. But depending on your graphics settings, you may see some banding. And if so, just raise that up a little bit. All right, water shadow strength, so that's a, a good one. Let's show you how that works. In order to show the shadows, I'm going to lower the water a little bit. So let's look over here. You can kind of see a little bit of shadows there. I've raised the shadow strength pretty high, and so you're not going to be seeing too much shadows. It's kind of the reverse. It's like the shadow reducer really is a better name for that. But you can see the shadow there. Typically clearer water is not going to have a whole lot of shadows and so that's why this clear prefab has a shadow strength that's pretty high but if you have more thick murky water that would cast a shadow better and block the light in which case you would see the shadow so you can tweak that. This is only affects surface shadows. We do have volumetric shadows which I will be getting to in a moment. These animation tilers and directions aren't even used. I will look at integrating them in the future version of the water but for now just ignore. This bump tiling parameter controls how spread out the bumps are so as you lower this to zero they will become more and more uh, spread out. So it's basically a scaling multiplier so at zero they're completely spread out and at really tiny values they are are bigger values so if I do 0.9 they're really close together so let's put all these together you can see that they're kind of super close together now which not very realistic uh, tweak those to your liking but again the defaults work pretty well okay so let's move on to pervert text displacement so this is going to be if you're having waves but you can even use it without waves just to control how the water spreads out. For this clear water I picked a fairly small value but if you're going to be doing waves you can raise that up a little bit. That's probably too big for the waves. So you can see as you raise that the vertexes get more and more crazy and spread out. Uh, tweaking the wave frequency, you can control how spread out the waves are. And obviously this is not looking super great, but you can play with these parameters until you get something that looks about what you want. And again, this is probably more for an ocean scene where you could turn off those reflections. Alrighty, so let's move on. We'll just skip the wave ones. Those are actually taken from the Unity water prefab. I haven't really messed with those too much. It's basically as is. So I'll be working on better waves at some point as well. Okay, so let's get this water back to the height that it was so I can show you the volumetric shadows. Alrighty, we've got volumetric sample count. Uh, sample distance maximum. Spread this out a little more so you can see it. We've got dithering for the shadows to control kind of a variety and smooth out banding. We've got shadow power, shadow power fade, and min shadow strength. So a bunch of parameters here. Let's start in reverse order with min shadow. So as this approaches one the shadows disappear as it approaches zero, the shadows are allowed to be at full strength. So you'll see what this does in a minute. So as I increase the shadow fade, of a shadow fade of one means no shadow fade. It means the shadows can be at full strength. Let's move up here. So you can already see some volumetric shadows there in the distance. As you raise the shadow power, those shadows get more and more powerful. And obviously at a power of 64, they're completely massive. 
and not super realistic. So you'll want to tweak that to be fairly low between the shadow power and shadow fade you can come up with some pretty good looking shadows and then you can even raise that up to control the shadows not being too dark and between tweaking that you can come up with some pretty good shadows now you'll notice here that the dithering parameter is causing a lot of flickering which can look really bad and you might think things are broken and they there's sort of a limitation with dithering here however on my main camera I've got a post-processing profile and in the profile is an amazing technique called anti-aliasing if you change the method to temporal anti-aliasing it really smooths out the dithering effect you can see that it's hardly noticeable now and now if I tweak my shadows a little bit more you can see that it's starting to look pretty good I'm pretty happy with those shadows right now um, but you can also lower that dithering again if you lower the dithering you might see some banding you can you can see that the temporal anti-aliasing is really making that dithering almost unnoticeable so I'm gonna show I'm gonna raise shadow power up a little bit so that you can see how that dithering actually works there we go so you can see that it kind of randomizes with no dithering now you're seeing the samples from each ray kind of spread out so you definitely want a little bit of dithering otherwise your sample count's going to have to be super high which is going to impact performance so basically raise that dithering until you see those samples kind of blend together and again with a higher shadow power you're going to notice that uh, even more so tweak the shadow power and this dither until it looks something like you're happy with again you can raise some of these parameters to help reduce the banding but it's basically an art form tweaking these dials until your shadows are looking like you want the max distance is basically says how far could the ray marcher go before it gives up as you lower that the ray will give up after a certain distance so you can see here that it's giving up before it finishes the whole march and the shadows don't look quite right so just raise that until your shadows look about right and then the the ray march just determines the quality you can leave that probably around 16 which is pretty fast I mean that performs well even on medium range uh, performance profiles so that is the full gamut of volumetric shadowing for the water there's a couple of other things that uh, should be noted with the water uh, you've got specular highlights from the Sun here it's integrated with weather maker so as the fog comes in those specular highlights go away take the fog out and they come back if you bring in a bunch of clouds those specular highlights will fade out which is really nice because you don't most water assets are just going to show those specular highlights all the time and they don't know about clouds or fog weathermaker has this all integrated so by using the weathermaker water you get uh, all of that integration for free basically so i really appreciate your time watching this video thanks so much if you have any questions about this or any feature of weathermaker please email me at support at digitalruby.com and I will do my best to answer your questions. If you made it through the whole tutorial, congratulations and uh, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.